Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. So this is the Dow 30 crossed over the gold price. And this is a really important chart because I've covered this on a longer term basis, but I just want to show you the daily chart here to show you the dramatic moves we've seen since the election. And uh, a couple of things to note here. First, the spike that we had in the price of gold when the initial news came out that Trump was going to win, and then, of course, a complete reversal. Also, you had a drop in the stock market and then a complete reversal. So now it's very clear that these two are moving in the opposite direction. In other words, it is a continuation of the trend that we've had for a very, very long time, which is to pump up paper assets and to suppress or sell off real assets. The, the moving gold is really phenomenal when you think about it. Uh, you can see that price of 1340 right there that was reached it came right up to that trend line and then quickly reversed and you can see it's in a dramatic fall uh, that's a big move for gold that's 1340 down to 1216 so uh, percentage wise that's that's a good percentage uh, move i don't know what this maybe seven or so Again, uh, with stocks, a big, big move up. You can see all the way into new highs. Uh, this area where we had challenged the new highs and then kind of tapered off and uh, tested the support and uh, you know the resistance that was made, it just uh, went away with this election. So... What does that mean? What does it mean that the markets are saying that things are going to be more so the way they were in the past? Uh, and uh, this is telling us that we're going into anything but change. Now, I wanted to look at an article here that uh, is related to this, and this is because uh, we're going to talk about the Trump infrastructure plan here, but I want to show you this trend that's been going on for quite some time. It's been going on under Obama for a long time, and the Obama stimulus, you have to remember that Obama added a tremendous amount to the debt with the stimulus that happened when he became president. Everyone admitted, including George Bush Jr., that capitalism, quote-unquote, was broken. We know that's not true because... We didn't have capitalism, uh, perhaps crony capitalism, but uh, Obama was allowed to add an enormous amount of money to the debt to get a big boost to his uh, initial uh, uh, term, first term, and his administration was benefited by all the money that was spent. Now, if you look at this, this is a trend that's been going on for some time. This is how government workers are outnumbering manufacturing workers. This is from CNS News. The United States lost 9,000 manufacturing jobs in October while gaining 19,000 jobs in government, according to data released by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Government employment grew from 22 million in September uh, 216 to 22,235 in October. According to the BLS, while manufacturing jobs dropped from 12 million 267 to 12 million 258, the 22 million 235,000 employed government workers in the United States now outnumber the 12 million 258,000 employed manufacturing workers by not, almost 10 million. Over the past year, from October 2015 to October 2016, manufacturing employment fell by 53. 3,000, etc. So you can see it, it's right here on this chart. You don't need anything else but this chart to show you that uh, we're still in a situation where government is growing and the economy is shrinking. Now, Trump was seemingly going on a reversal of this because Trump is, has been talking about bringing jobs back. And the question is, how is he going to do it? 
so one of the first things we would expect to be addressed by the new administration would be uh, trade and I would assume tariffs, although I don't believe they really work, but that would be something that we would expect to see an announcement about, but that's not what we've got an announcement about. In fact, Trump is talking about this infrastructure plan, and this is an article from Politico, Conservatives versus Trump's Infrastructure Plan. The president-elect's $1 trillion proposal is getting a welcome from Democrats, but not from conservative groups. One of Donald Trump's top campaign promises, a trillion-dollar program to rebuild highways, tunnels, bridges, and airports, is already meeting resistance from conservatives. The president-elect has vowed that his infrastructure proposal will create millions of jobs, likening it to Dwight Eisenhower's creation of the interstate highway system. It's one piece of his agenda that's drawing support from the Democrats, who love public works programs just as much as Trump loves to brag about his experience building golf courses and skyscrapers. But Trump's 10-year infrastructure proposal could offer an early test of how some of his more unconventional policy ideas will fly with conservative Republicans in Congress even though he hasn't made it clear whether much or even any of that $1 trillion would come from federal coffers. Dan Haller, spokesman for the group Heritage Action for America, questioned the job creation claims for such plans in the same way that conservatives have scoffed at the benefits of President Barack Obama's $832 billion stimulus. Quote, Conservatives do not view infrastructure spending as an economic stimulus, and Congressional Republicans rightly rejected that approach in 2009, said Haller, whose group is the political arm of the Heritage Foundation. He said Congress should devote its energies to other items on Trump's wish list. Quote, it would be a mistake to prioritize big government endeavors over important issues like repealing Obamacare, reforming our regulatory system, and expanding domestic energy production, Haller said. Along with confining a conservative justice, confirming a conservative justice to the Supreme Court, these are the type of legislative efforts that will help anxious families and folks struggling all across the country. Trump's proposal even drew flack from the Competitive Enterprise Institute, a conservative group that his transition team has turned to for advice on environmental policies. Quote, there is little evidence that these public works projects promote long-run economic health. CEI fellow Mark Scribner wrote Thursday in a blog post on the great infrastructure myth. Now, I wanted to talk about this infrastructure thing. Uh, China has been roundly criticized for their building out of their infrastructure. I don't think that we can really argue that it's been a failure. I know we've had all the ghost city uh, articles and, and things like that, and I've shown in previous videos that most of that is a myth. Many of the ghost cities are now uh, have people in them. And if you build something that's a value that's going to help your economy, then it's better than a, a balanced transfer from producers to consumers, which is what we do here in America. But the question is, is what Trump is proposing, is that going to be similar to what China has done and I'm going to say no because the only way that an investment in infrastructure is going to benefit your economy is if the infrastructure investment in increases or improves uh, the ability of businesses to do business whether that's manufacturing um, or any other wealth creating endeavor Repairing bridges is a great thing if you if if your economy is based on moving goods, but that's not what our economy is based on. So it's a little bit disturbing to me to see how Trump is talking about spending money to basically create government works projects and not really explaining to us how the jobs are going to come back that utilize those investments. 
if we repair every bridge in the country, but we don't have businesses that use those bridges, uh, those bridges to make a profit, then I don't really see how that investment is beneficial to the economy overall. So it's a little bit disturbing to see him introduce government spending programs before he talks about how he's going to fix trade. We don't really have any information about how he's going to fix trade. Now I want to talk about an article uh, that is something that's a real positive for me and that's Trump's plan for the Second Amendment. Uh, So for me, electing Trump over Hillary is better than anything we could have chosen just on this basis. And uh, there are a lot of other reasons, including the appointment of Supreme Court justices, although we have no idea who Trump's really going to appoint. And we know in the past that many quote-unquote conservative presidents actually appointed very, very liberal justices to the Supreme Court. But the the current state of the Supreme Court is, uh, I would say, in, in a word, atrocious. Uh, it is a far-left court. It is a anti-Christian uh, court. Uh, there are no wa- wasps on the court. There are no uh, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant members of the Supreme Court. They are all either Catholics, Jews, lesbians, women, or minorities. There are no white male Christians on the Supreme Court anymore. Uh, will Trump reverse that? I don't know. Uh, I know that Hillary would just make the situation worse, but I'm very encouraged by his statement about his plan for the Second Amendment. Let's read this. This is from the Conservative Tribune. One common criticism of billionaire businessman and and President-elect Donald Trump is that he far too often speaks in vague generalities and rarely offers specifics about where he stands on the issues. That is no longer the case, at least regarding his stance on gun rights and the Second Amendment. After Trump released his official policy position on his campaign website, Quote, the Second Amendment to our Constitution is clear. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed upon, period, the position paper began. Trump went on to explain that the right to keep and bear arms is a right that pre-exists both government and the Constitution. Now that is very interesting. He's actually citing natural law noting that government didn't create the right, nor can it take it away. He also rightly denoted the Second Amendment as America's first freedom, pointing out that it helps protect all of the other rights we hold dear. In order to protect and defend that right, Trump proposed tougher enforcement of laws that are already on the books rather than adding new gun control laws. Signing a successful program in Richmond, Virginia, that sentence gun criminals to mandatory minimum five-year sentences in federal prison. Trump noted that crime rates will fall dramatically when criminals are taken off the streets for lengthy periods of time. Trump also proposed strengthening and expanding laws allowing law-abiding gun owners to defend themselves from criminals using their own guns without fear of repercussion from the government noting that many of the recent high-profile shooters had clear mental problems that should have been addressed. Trump proposed fixing our nation's broken mental health system by increasing treatment opportunities for non-violently mentally ill, but removing from the streets those people who pose a danger to themselves and others. Trump would do away with pointless and ineffective gun and magazine bans and suggested fixing the current background check system already in place rather than expanding a broken system. Furthermore, Trump proposed a national right to carry, a national concealed carry reciprocity law that would compel states to recognize the concealed carry permits of any other states exactly as driver's licenses from anywhere are accepted by all states. Finally, Trump would lift the prohibition on military members carrying weapons on military bases and in recruiting centers, allowing trained military members to carry weapons to protect themselves from attacks by terrorists, criminals, and the mentally unstable, as we've seen recently. 
So that is fantastic news on the Second Amendment. But back to the economic news, I really have to say that I don't think Trump is in a position to correct things without seeing a collapse. Now, I know that he ran on a platform using the term drain the swamp. And I've given proposals of what I would think it, it, sh- it should take to drain the swamp. And it would be very, very drastic. Now, we can see he's not going in that direction. He's talking about infrastructure projects. We don't have the details. But the fact that he hasn't proposed... Uh, the trade policies that will increase the jobs, although he's hinted at tax relief for companies that bring back their profits to the U.S., uh, we don't have specifics. We have uh, an emphasis on the infrastructure spending, and I would say that based on that and looking at this chart, that Wall Street sees more free money coming their way, that uh, we don't see a reversal of the gold manipulation but uh, a continuation of that pattern. So uh, I would say so far it's a wash. And again, these are just proposals. We don't even have an inauguration. We're months away from that. But uh, things are starting to begin to be clear. I don't think it's possible for Trump to confront the problems that we have. Every president that we've seen come into office for the last maybe two or three decades, has been forced to print an enormous amount of money. If that's the case, then we'll probably see a reversal of this move in gold, and uh, stocks will probably continue the uptrend, but uh, the precious metals will not continue down if we have serious money printing uh, in the first 100 days. And we'll talk to you next time.